Well, quick service restaurant franchise group Famous Brands with a market cap of 4.9 billion rand has a global footprint of 1,764 franchised restaurants spread across South Africa, 17 African countries and, of course, the United Kingdom. Its brand's portfolio includes Steers, Wimpy SA, Debonair's Pizza and Mug and Bean, to name just a few. Well, Famous Brands, Paul, has got to be a favourite among many fund managers when it comes to restaurant chains and uh, mm. this is the big one how do you feel about it yeah it's the big one look it's not particularly big five billion odd market caps not enormous and it's done very very well but it's been a long time coming it was on the market obviously as famous brands it started with the steers network it did a very inspired deal i don't know about a decade or more ago to buy wimpy at the bottom of one of those last cycles using debt from the avi group worked brilliantly. They brought in outside management, previously owned and managed by the Halamandaris family. So it's just generally been a great success story. They've gone from strength to strength. They've acquired all these additional brands. They're on a roll. They're benefiting from the move of lower middle income people into the sort of quick service dining type experience. So it's doing very well and as you say, much loved. It always feels a little expensive, but it always delivers. A little expensive in your book, Craig? It's run up to 51 Rand quite recently, um, a PE of about 20, so it is seeming expensive considering the fact that a lot of the growth has been on the acquisition path. And so one wonders now if they bed things down, will they still get the same operating margins? So um, I suppose the, the question of value is also around what those operating margin squeeze is going to be like because you've got, um, I suppose, the cost of red meat going up petrol and the logistics and supply chain side that needs to be absorbed and the problem is you can only really push menu prices up very marginally two three percent if you go to your local butcher and you, you want to buy a fillet for 260 rand a kg this week and next week it's one rand 90 you just get a different size cut whereas in the, uh, the, the, the this type of industry it's a little bit difficult to, uh, to chase prices Tashes has obviously been a very successful acquisition for them and continues to storm ahead the recent opening of a Tashes in Hyde Park. <laughs> you cannot get in there for love or money. Yeah, no, it looks fabulous. Look, that is the thing. They're positioning themselves across the spectrum. We know that in South Africa, the most successful menu option is chicken because that's the kind of first protein of choice for the largest number of people. So Kentucky, which is owned by Yum Brands, which is kind of a local franchise operation, is the largest, but also chicken licking and a couple of other things. Nando's is also in there, was listed before, is now off the market. So, you know, that's kind of something to watch as well. We know that the uh, offering from Steers has more been in the kind of hamburger space. So that's equivalent of McDonald's. And they've battled a little bit with the chicken offering. So they bought that thing called Giramundo's. And that was the strategy which they've adopted with Volvatello and with Tashes as well. In other words, find someone who is, you know, fresh, entrepreneurial and seems to have something that's got a little bit of momentum and is getting some, you know, positive mentions in the press. Buy 51% of it so you retain the entrepreneur and the energy and then look and see whether you can't go, you know, cross the country with it. So far, apparently not kind of really seeing enormous uh, traction with the Guramundos thing. So I think that's something for them to work on, something in the chicken environment. I think these upper end things like Tashes and so on, I mean, um, it's great. And it's very fabulous and swish you, and all the rest of it. You're not trying to get into Tashes on a daily basis <laughs> in Joburg, I see. It's still fairly small, though, as a divisional contribution. Mug and Bean, I suppose, is also in that environment. But I think... We've got to see how they take these things, and I think they'll all do well because it's a, it's a big secular move. Craig, let's throw it to you. Hot or not in your book with regard to taste holdings? Taste, you mean uh, I mean uh, famous, famous brands, brands huh? sorry. Fa I've, been, I've been on a long holiday. I mean famous <laughs> brands. We're talking about <laughs> famous brands at this point. I think, I think um, the, uh, it is a, a nice story, but, I'd li but I think it's run up high. So on a valuation basis, it's not hot. I'd also like to see them get rid of some of their brands. I mean, they're sitting with uh, three or four um, Irish pub brands and three coffee house brands, and it just seems like some things have to, have to change going forward, and they're creating new brands too. 
So um, I don't think Jeremundas is going to compete with the likes of KFC and Nando's. Uh, there's a lot of things that is wait and see, on the, but a current valuation is not hot. Not hot. Paul, in your book? Now, I'm happy to give it the hot. As I say, I love this general category of quick service dining across the globe. And we're going to talk tonight about a whole lot of big ones and small ones. I think this one is just the right size. It's big enough. It's paid its school fees. It's got its supply chain in place. It's experimenting with different models. So I think it's, uh, it's hot and it's the sort of scale I like to invest in.